TriMet has yet to get involved with what's typically called bus rapid transit. Uh, the city of Eugene, though, has had a line for several years now. What does the term bus rapid transit mean to you, and what is BRT's role in TriMet's future? Do you see it as a low-cost replacement for future high-capacity corridors where light rail is being considered? I see it as a great augmentation to our system. Um, I think our regional transportation plan has suggested that there should be past those projects that are on the drawing board right now, Portland, Milwaukee, and Columbia River Crossing, there should be two major additional corridors that we think about. One is the Barber Southwest um, Corridor, the other is the Powell Corridor. And I think the suggestion is that the Powell Corridor might be um, really a, a great fit for uh, bus rapid transit. And again, bus rapid transit is uh, sort of in the eye of the beholder. I think at some level it is um, it, less frequent stops. It's uh, perhaps very frequent service. Uh, it may be bigger buses, that, and it may be uh, ticketing uh, outside uh, platform ticketing like we have on our uh, light rail system. Uh, and it means some level of priority treatment along its route, whether those be queue jumps for traffic signals or separate lanes or some very various combination of those. And I think of that very flexibility is what makes it attractive in some quarters. Um, I'm sure it will also be looked at in Barber as we get further into those Barber Southwest Corridor. Whether it's the right mode or not, you know, that there would be a whole series of studies and a lot of public input about what the right answer to that is. So I wouldn't prejudge it at all. I think it's a really, it's an important mode. It's one that TriMet has really wanted to do. Um, but it, it has been a hard, um, hard to do in sort of the face of many other priorities of the region, including streetcar and some of our various light rail systems. So we've been building a great system. Um, but um, the BRT hasn't been a part of it yet, but I'm sure it will be in the future. Actually, a follow-up to the BRT question would be, uh, in the 1980s, TriMet had a troublesome time with 60-foot articulated buses. Yes. Many other transit agencies operate these successfully to increase capacity without increasing their labor costs. TriMet does have lines which are overcrowded. Will TriMet take a fresh look at 60-foot buses? Um, oh, you know, we have periodically reviewed that. Um, I would like to take another look at that over the next year or so. I don't think there's any big rush because I think you're right. The priority really for TriMet is to get um, its high floor, non-air conditioned buses replaced and uh, with good 40 foot air conditioned high, uh, you know, and use the hot rider term, tricked out buses with, uh, with all of our bells and whistles. The issue ends up being the difference between running a few extra buses and the extra cost of maintaining a separate fleet. And those are sort of technical trade-offs that I need to hear from the staff on. We already discussed the four new hybrid buses that have been purchased. Right. Uh, how fast will TriMet be able to adopt new technologies such as that and possibly trolley buses or other methods that might be less uh, fossil fuel dependent? Well, I think on, on the hybrids, um, we're really pleased to get this grant because it will give us real world experience right here in Portland, Oregon, USA on what the, the cost benefit trade-offs are between the higher cost uh, technology, and they're, you know, the hybrid buses are about 40% more, and they get about, presumably, about 20% better fuel economy. So we'll be able to look, you know, precisely at what the real examples are, or what the real factors are here in, in Portland. I think that, again, as I noted, I think FTA will have a number of innovative programs, and I really do want, and I will emphasize that, uh, that I'm going to be looking for TriMet to become a leader in applying for some of those. We've been a leader in light rail technology. We were the first property in North America to have low floor light rail vehicles. Um, we've been a leader in streetcar technology. Again, Portland Streetcar Inc. has done a great job in terms of bringing a new product and actually being manufactured now here in Clackamas County within our region. So it seems to me some improvement and some uh, cutting edge bus technology would be to our advantage as well, and I think we're perfectly capable of, of developing that. As a follow-up, um, in addition to fuel efficiency, how do issues like air quality and noise pollution fit into TriMet's decision making and planning? Um, very important. One of the uh, objectives we've had, every new bus order we get, we look for ways to improve it, and one of the things we've really been focusing on is um, soundproofing the diesel engines, for example, and moving the exhaust to places where it's likely to be less intrusive to the neighbors. And you know, you think about on a downtown street like we're in front of now, you want these to be really friendly places where people can be out with tables and you know, tables and chairs and enjoying themselves. And 
Um, so we don't want stinky loud buses, frankly. Um, and so we've been working hard to improve that. Um, the other part is that diesel technology itself is improving dramatically and getting much cleaner. And so, for example, we faced a decision recently on our lift fleet, uh, gas engines versus diesel engines, and we, and there were a number of in, people in the agency were saying, don't go with diesel because this is brand new technology that has urea uh, injection into the, uh, the exhaust that you know, really cleans it up in a very um, measurable way, but it's a little bit untested. But we're gonna go with that way, and we're gonna try it, and we're gonna see how it does, but it's, particularly for the reason you're talking about, A, fuel economy, but B, um, we want to be, um, we want to be environmental stewards, and that's a real, real bottom line ethic of everybody at TriMet. Uh, TriMet has numerous citizen and stakeholder committees, but there is no committee dedicated solely to riders. Uh, riders unions such as OPAL are forming in a number of cities. How can TriMet work with rider groups, and will TriMet form a rider committee which has substantial input? Well, I haven't given a thought about a rider committee um, particular thought, but I know that we have uh, riders represented on our budget advisory committee. We have riders uh, on our citizens advisory committees for our various projects that we do. So as the opportunities come up, we do include riders. Um, I think that we can work closely with these uh, groups such as Opal, and I'm really hopeful. I'm really encouraged that. Um, that they believe public transit is that important that they really want to put their, their energy and effort into it. Um, probably won't agree with everything that everybody says, but I think if we can agree that our objective is really to make public transit better, to improve public transit, then uh, I know we can work with these groups and I think we can do some great things together.